Well, we've kind of changed the vantage point here just so that uh, visually it would be easier to see the foot massage portion of this uh, recipe. Um, I've got a couple towels here just because I'm going to be using oil on her feet and I'm going to be lifting her foot up. Uh, I've still got my hot stones there and I'm heating up my oil. And I'm just going to place this towel over my lap. And are you feeling comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And I'm feeling comfortable too, and that's really important is that. Um, you know, I, I'm on this stool, not everybody would have a stool like this at home, but you could use something. We're also bolstering up her legs here a bit with a, it's, um, this is actually a meditation cushion, but um, you could use almost anything, you know, a stack of blankets or towels or anything that you could figure out. I'm just warming up the stones again here, so I'm going to hand her a couple of these stones just to hold on to. for the legs. So I'm just going to take them out and have them cooling a little bit. And I'm just going to, can you just hand me one leg? I'm going to place her leg in my lap. Is that comfortable? Mm -hmm. okay. And now we've got some nice warm oil. I've actually blended some uh, Madagascar vanilla into this blend. It's you have to have a significant amount of oil on, on the body part before you start to rub the stones on because you, you need to be able to have the glide. So, and I'm just effleuraging all the way up the leg to the knee, just below the knee, and back down. Or you can alternate. How does the heat feel? It's good. It's yeah. a great temperature. Do you like the hot stones? <laughs> yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it really adds a very sensual effect, you know, using the stones. It's, and it's really a seasonal thing that we like to do. These stones in particular are sculpted stones, so they've actually been polished and they, they're, they're significantly smoother than stones you'd get off the beach. So now you're just going to use some finger kneading on the musculature on the outside and inside of the legs. So I'm just kind of using one hand to reinforce the other hand as I move along the leg. And I'm using, I'm, I'm working the back of the calf now. Just doing some squeezing with my hands. Okay, so now we're going to work on the foot. And then the foot, you can take, just like with the hands, you can take the hands and squeeze the foot so that you can kind of increase the arch a little bit for the person. If they've got tight feet, you want to just kind of encourage, you know, sort of the rounding of the foot. And then at the same time, you can encourage the extension of the foot. How does that feel? Good. Not too hard. Yeah, so get some feedback from the person that you're working on. Um, you know, maybe they have ticklish feet or sensitive feet. And uh, so sometimes the best thing for that is to actually go slower. You know, slower and just really slow down so that the stimulation to the nervous system isn't quite as quick and abrupt. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the techniques in the recipe is that you would take the hand on the inside of the foot and you would turn the foot like a spiral. Mm -hmm. 
So here I'm just turning the foot, turning the foot, turning the foot, just kind of gently bending the foot. We'll have a video that will explain the effleurage, tetrasage, and tapotement techniques. That video itself will give you a lot of uh, descriptive ways of different styles of work within those three um, defining terms for bodywork or for massage therapy that come from the Western world. How does that feel? Nice. Yeah, so this is a trigger stone. And it's also another sculpted stone that you can work the bottom of the foot with. And so you can just play around with what you feel comfortable with. I mean, you can use the broad portion of it and you can actually push the foot down into it so you get a little bit more heat. But at the same time, I used a few um, uh, acupuncture points or reflexology points in the recipe that, um, that I talked about that you would work say the point in here that is more related to the breathing and the center of the nervous system, the solar plexus. And also you've got, you know, some of the, um, the areas that uh, stimulate your endocrine system here on the, more the inside of the foot, so you can kind of run the, the stone along there. And another good place to work is in between the toes. So just here at the ball of the foot, but you can kind of work, you know, some, just some areas in between the toe and the second toe, the big toe and the second toe. How does that feel in there? It's not tender, just nice. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> we'll just take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. These are actually lymphatic points here on the top of the foot in between the toes like this so you can kind of just sort of stroke down through there with your fingers or with your thumb. And always just pushing the circulation towards the, the heart more or less. And I'm going to work a little bit around the heel. <laughs> With the fingers, you can kind of stimulate the ends of the toes. Now you could do that in a way where you just kind of kneaded them with, the, with your fingertips. But, you know, and just kind of squeeze them a little bit. Or you could try to kind of snap them a little bit. Because this is kind of nice to sort of separate the bones a little bit and get some mobility into the foot but because your hands gonna be a bit slippery from the oil like pulling on the toes you'll want to use your towel and just kind of give the toe a little bit of traction and that's nice just loosen up the, the toe joints from the rest of the foot and then you can dry off the, the excess oil. Finish with some effleurage. And if somebody has like kind of knee problems, you might find that if they have too much weight on their knee, you could always get like maybe a pillow that you could put like just at the edge of the chair or you just want to make sure that what you're not doing is hyperextending the knee. Now Louise doesn't have a problem with that, but a lot of people's knee will go backwards like this. And that can put a lot of strain on the joint over, you know, over sort of a 10 minute period. I've got this little wrap here. Just test it, you know, if you can hold your hand against it for a while, the foot's less sensitive to heat, so. Stretching their foot down like this can be helpful. Just kind of running up that way. And then here again, just be careful not to put the, the stone on the bone. The tibia here is quite sensitive. And you can take the side of this rock, just like what I was doing on the arms, 
and just strip the foreleg like this. How does that feel? It's good. A little bit tender? Yeah. Yeah. This tends to be pretty tight in people. And look at how I'm moving backwards and forwards like this. This is different than just working with my arms and kind of bending over like that. You want to kind of give some flow to your movements. So you can move, you know, from your pelvis, keep your feet well balanced on the floor underneath you. Like that solar plexus area, that's pretty easy to find. You just come up the center of the foot and just right when the foot becomes the ball of the foot, the front forefoot. And be sure that you're not like sort of reefing something into the person as much as sort of feeling, trying to feel the tissue that's actually underneath the stone. I'm going to give you another one of these. I think that's mine. So say you didn't have these stones to do this with, you could actually give them some heat into the bottom of their foot. One of the best ways to create friction and heat in your hand is just to put one drop of oil on your hand just to create the friction and you just increase the ability to get the heat so much more. And it feels wonderful to connect that heat into someone's body part, right? So what you could do is you could have the person have both feet up on your lap at that point, right? And then you could just ask them to take, close their eyes and take a few breaths, deep breaths. And this is gonna be a way for them to know then you kind of finish the massage, right? They're just lying there relaxing and you're doing some of this fingertip stroking that I mentioned. You're just letting them know that the massage is coming to a close. And you can rub your hands together and then just put them on the bottoms of the feet and just send some relaxing, calm energy through the person's body. We're finished with our massage for now. And you can just relax here for a few minutes. And uh, how, how did you like your winterized beverage? Did you oh, enjoy very that? Nice. Yes. Thank you. Yes. This went for our time. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And so at the end of, say, a massage like this, if you did have a hot water bottle and you had it wrapped up, this has got this funky little cover on it, but um, you could just lay it on the person's belly or lay it on the person's lap and just let them just relax while you tidy up. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Roxanne Dirksen from Beauty Therapy and this is Louise Quinby and she's so kindly given me her hands and feet to massage today for you. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, what our recipe books, boxes look like and you can find us at www.beautytherapy.com. Bye now.